Hello there, scholars. Why did the student eat his homework? Because the teacher said it was a piece of cake. <laughs> what did the big flower say to the little flower? Hey there, bud. <laughs> what kind of shoes do ghosts wear? Boots. <laughs> Have you heard the one about the skunk? You know what? Never mind. It really stinks. <laughs> Hi, everybody. My name's Miss Smullen. I'm a visual arts instructor at Stuart Hobson Middle School. And this week, I'll be guiding you through the visual arts lesson meant for third through fifth grade. This week, we'll be discussing laughter and exploring its positive effects on our lives. We'll also be making an artwork that reflects this week's theme of laugh out loud. <laughs> During this lesson, I'll be asking you five questions that I would like you to answer on a piece of paper with a pencil. If you need to get the materials ready, please do that now. Did you know that research shows laughing a hundred times a day can be just as good for your body as 10 whole minutes of exercise? When we're very small babies, we can laugh up to 400 times a day, but the average grown-up only laughs 14 times a day. Do you know a grown-up that you could make laugh today? Let's start with our questions. During these questions, I want you to reflect on your personal experiences and background knowledge. I'll give you some examples, but I would love for you to write down your own answers. Number one, when is the last time you laughed? I know the last time I laughed was when I was talking to my friend Olivia about the silly things her pet rabbits do. This is a picture of Belle, Olivia's pet bunny. She's a very silly bunny, and we laugh a lot when Olivia tells me stories about her. Number two, when you laugh, how does it make you feel? I know when I laugh with Olivia, it makes me feel really close to her because we're sharing in an experience. It also makes me really happy to laugh. What about you? Number three, who are the people in your life that make you laugh? Is there a particular person you think of when you think about laughter? Write down your answer for number three. Number four. Is there a special movie or TV show that you know will always make you laugh? Does watching that movie or television show put you in a good mood? And number five. What do you think a positive benefit of laughing is? What can be something that is good that comes out of laughter? Think about those questions as we go over this week's project. Now that we reviewed the questions that you need to answer for today's work, I'd like to transition to table time to teach you about our art making method. This week's project is going to use collage. Collage is a type of art where the artist combines many different materials, like magazines, newspapers, maybe string or fabric, colored paper, sparkles, confetti, and combines them all to make one work of art. Today, you're going to be making a collage using the theme Laugh Out Loud. But before we can start our project, you're going to need to review some art skills that have to do with collage. Let's sit down and I'll show you some really interesting things you could try. Hi everybody and welcome to Table Time. As you can see, I have my table set up to make a collage. A collage is a work of art that's made by sticking different materials such as photographs or paper onto a backing. Let's go over what materials you're going to need to complete your collage. The first thing you're going to need is a piece of paper for your backing. I just have a plain white sheet of paper, but you can use any type of paper that you have at home. 
you're also going to need things to stick to your backing. You might be able to find some interesting pattern paper or colored paper. Maybe there's some magazines that you could flip through and find some interesting words or images. Or maybe there's some things that were in the mailbox that you could borrow. You're going to flip through these magazines to find your images and your patterns that you're going to stick to your backing. Speaking of sticking things to your backing, you'll need something to stick the images with. Maybe you'll use Elmer's school glue or a glue stick. Or maybe you have some rubber cement at home. Or you can even use clear tape or packing tape. If you don't have anything to stick your items to your backing, you can always arrange your items in an interesting way and then get your mom or dad to take a picture of your collage and now you have a copy of your artwork. You'll also need some scissors or if you don't have scissors you can use your hands to tear paper and make interesting shapes for your backing. The first thing we're gonna have to do to make a collage is to create an interesting background. You might want to do this by taking big sheets of paper and gluing them to your backing. Before we start gluing and assembling our collage, I want to review how to use these different types of glue correctly. If you have Elmer's school glue, you want to be very careful that you don't use too much. If you use too much glue, your paper will get all wrinkly and it'll look really messy. Here's a tip for using glue. I like to remember dot dot not a lot. Once I have dots across my paper, I'm going to use my finger to make sure my dots are smoothed out so there's not too much glue in one location. By doing this, you're spreading out the liquid glue because the liquid in the glue is what makes your paper wrinkly. So the more spread out it is, the neater your artwork is going to look. Once you've spread it with your finger, you can flip it over, stick it to your backing, and then make sure you smooth it down. My paper is still a little bit wrinkly, but that's okay. After I put some big colors and maybe some big pictures onto my background, I'll be ready to move on to creating images and pictures on top of this background. For my example, I'm going to pull out a background that I already worked on. I went through magazines and I found all these different things that I think I could use in my collage. Before I glue anything down, I want to plan out what this collage is going to look like. And I'm going to do this by following some of these tips. The first tip is, you should try to mix up big images and small images. So maybe I find this big image of a baseball player and I want to put it right here. And then I want to add a smaller image, like one of these flowers. And I'm going to cut it out and mix it with my big image. The next tip for collage is mix up things that look old and things that look new. In this example, this black and white picture of the baseball player can look old, but this colorful picture in the background can look new. The next tip that I have for you is to think about repeating and layering items in your collage. So maybe I want to cut out a whole bunch of these flowers and repeat them over my background. I also might want to layer this black and white baseball player over the background to make it more interesting. Once you've decided what your collage is going to look like, then you can begin to glue things down. So maybe this is how I want my collage to start. So I'm going to use rubber cement to glue these things down. 
Now I want to show you one really cool tip if you're an advanced artist. I'm going to show you how to take a picture that's on a white background and take the ink off this paper so I can overlay or layer this picture on top of my baseball player and still be able to see him. If I just glued it down, you wouldn't be able to see my baseball player anymore. But if you use this trick, you will be able to see your baseball player. All right, to do this trick, you're gonna need tape. You can use regular clear tape like this, I like to use the big packing tape because this is a little bit wider and easier to work with. But you're going to take a piece of tape, tear it off carefully. You might want to ask a mom or dad or a grown up that's at home to help you. And you're going to stick the paper on the top of the image that you want to use with the picture that you want on the sticky side. So you can see I stuck the sticky side right on top and then I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to trim it so that there's no sticky part of the paper hanging off the sides. So I'm just going to trim this down. Now one thing that you're going to need if you try this tape technique is you're going to need a little bowl of water. So I'm just going to reach over. I prepared a little bit of this water in this little tray. Let's see, maybe I can put it up here so you can see. And you're gonna take your picture that has the tape on it and you're gonna put it right in the water. And you're just gonna make sure it's really wet on the back. And this can get a little bit messy, so make sure you ask a grown up at the house where you can work to do this part of the assignment. So I'm just going to make sure it's nice and wet and I'm going to pull my picture out of the water and I'm going to flip it upside down and now this paper that's on the back of the tape is all wet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to carefully, carefully start rubbing the paper off and if I'm very careful it will leave the flowers behind and when I flip the tape over and put it onto my background that I created you'll see that the flowers can be layered on top of my background so I'm just very carefully rubbing the paper off. Sometimes you'll notice that it's not wet enough, so mine's not quite wet enough, so I'm going to put a little bit more water on the back. It shouldn't be too hard to rub the paper off, but if you're finding it very difficult, you can ask a grown-up for help, or you can put it in the water again to try to wipe off the paper. So. I'm almost done. I think I'm just going to do half of this so that I can show you on my collage what it'll look like if you just use the picture and what it looks like if you rub the paper off the backing. So I'm just going to do this small part and then I'd like to show you this on my collage that I'm making. All right, let's see what it looks like. You'll see that like lots of this paper comes off. It's a little bit messy. So just make sure you clean up your workspace because you don't want to make a big mess at home that you'll have to clean up later. So I'm going to bring my collage back out. And now if you look, I could put this flower over top of my collage and you can still see the green background behind it. The other part of the flowers that I didn't rub the paper on, you can see you can't see the background. So this is a really cool method to use to layer images on top using that clear tape. Um, it's really fun. I'm going to show you one more example of this and I'm going to use this word baseball that I found. So 
once again, to transfer this image onto tape, you're gonna take a big piece of tape and you're gonna stick it to your image. Now to remove that white paper, I'm gonna trim the tape off. And then I'm gonna stick it in my water. So I'm gonna stick it right here in the water. I'm gonna give it a couple moments to get wet. I really love this part because it's a little bit fun to play in the water to try to get the back nice and wet. Once it's wet, you can put your water to the side. You're gonna flip your image over and you're gonna carefully begin to rub the white paper off and you can see if you look really closely on my hand see how the ink stays behind but the white paper gets rubbed off it's kind of hard to see on the table but when I pull it off, I think you will see that it did work. And you have to be a little bit patient because this takes a little bit of time. So thank you friends for waiting while I finish. All right, now I can bring this over to my collage and now it can say baseball right on the orange background and I don't see any of the white and I've created this collage. So when you make your collage, I'd like you to remember the tips that I shared with you. The first tip is to mix big images and objects with small images and objects. The next tip is try to find something old and mix it with something new. And the last tip is try to repeat and layer. So my flowers repeat and I'm going to layer them on top of my image. Now I could work to glue all these things down to my collage or once again, you can ask an adult at home to take a picture of your collage and then you have a copy on your phone. All right, friends, that's all for table time. I wish you a lot of luck. Now that we've reviewed the skills you'll need to complete your collage, I'd like to show you an example of a collage that fits into the theme of laugh out loud. In this collage example, I've used the tips that we talked about during table time to create a work of art that fits the theme laugh out loud. If you notice, I've used some big things like these flowers. I've used some small things like these flowers. I've used some things that were old like this old paper and some things that were new like the pictures from the magazines. And I've even layered and repeated shapes and objects like how these little triangles are repeated and layered over top of each other. I've also paid particular ten attention to what is the focus of my artwork. In this example, the dog is the focus. And if you notice, a lot of the things in my image point towards the dog. Like the words, the line goes down towards the dog. Like the patterns at the top, they go around and over to the dog and the dog stands out against this colored background. The dog is the focus of my artwork and all the things I added help support the dog. This is a great example of a collage that's created in the theme of laugh out loud. I'd love to see what you come up with this week in your collage. If you'd like to ask a mom or dad to post a picture of you on Twitter, you can tag Art with Smullen. I'd love to see what you come up with and I wish you all the luck. And don't forget, try to make someone laugh this week.
It's really good for our bodies. Goodbye and good luck.